This is Mr. Mark, and this video is about data validation, more specifically using data validation to create a dropdown in Excel. Now, for this example, let's say that I'm selling items online. I create a table where I store the names of the items in the first column, then whether or not the items have sold in the second column, and then in the third column, the name of the online store where the item is being sold. Now. For the second column, the answer is either yes or no. Either the item has sold or it has not. So what I will do is select this whole column by clicking on column B. And the reason why I select the whole column is because I want that the, the, the yes or no data validation, yes or no dropdown list I'm about to create, that it will apply to the whole column B so that as I add more items, the drop down will be present next to each item. Now, to start, I'll click on data. I'll go to data validation right here. Okay, and the first thing we'll look at are the settings. The settings is currently set to allow any value by default. In this case, you want to select list. All right, we're not dealing with numbers, so none of these apply. So I will click on list. All right, in cell drop down is checked off. That means that I, it will create a drop down menu, which is what I want. The thing is, there are only two things that I want to allow to be entered. One is yes, the other is no. So I actually have to type out yes, comma, no. Yes, comma, no, there are two choices. And those are the settings. Now let's take a look at some of these other things available on data validation. You also have an input message. Now the way I see it, you really don't need the input message when you have a drop down. The input message is there or could be used to give the user instructions or to give yourself instructions on how to enter the data. But if you have a drop down, once you click on the arrow, it's pretty obvious that you're just going to select one of the choices. All right, so I'm not going to use input message. Then you have error alert. Error alert is so that if someone tries to enter something that is not allowed, that some kind of message will display. Now, if you're just doing this for yourself, I mean, it's not really such a big deal. But if you're a serious spreadsheet designer creating spreadsheets for other people, you might want to make use of this. For the error message, I'm just going to go ahead and put incorrect entry all right or even better I'll put invalid entry invalid entry and click OK all right so you'll see that when I click on the arrow it says yes or no so I can select yes meaning this item has sold I can select no for instance the necklace is not sold, and then the phone charger, yes, it has sold. You also, I also want you to see that if I try to enter anything else, let's say maybe, that it gives me an error message, invalid entry. Had I not entered an error message, this pop-up, this box still would have popped up, but there would be no message here. All I would get is the red X the red circle with the X in it. I can click retry or I can click cancel. If I retry, it's still not gonna work. The only thing I can do is get this out and select one of these two. So part of data validation is forcing you to enter the data correctly. Okay. Now, another thing is that, remember I selected the whole column B. And although data validation does make sense for the entire column B, it does not make sense for the title. So for the title, I will go back to data validation and simply select clear all and OK. And that will clear the data validation from the title. All right. And now I'm going to move on to the store. OK. So for the online store, OK, there might be many online stores that I might be using. Um, but let's say to start off, I'm only using 
three different stores. Of course, I can easily list those in the data validation. However, I'd like to show you something else. What I normally do in this case is I will actually create a list. So I'm going to go down here, hit New Sheet, and on a separate sheet, I'm going to create a list of the online stores. So the first one, for instance, might be eBay. So I'll put eBay, I'll type Amazon, and I'll type Etsy. Okay, and of course there might be way more than these, but I'm just going to go with these three main ones, right? And I'm going to zoom this in a bit so you can see it a little better. And this is basically my list of online stores. Now I'm going to go back to sheet one, and I will go to data, data validation. And actually, let me X that out. I forgot to select the whole column. So first, I'm going to select column C. Then I will go to data validation. I will go back to settings. And again, I will select list. However, this time, instead of actually typing out my list, I'm going to go to sheet two, where I have created a list. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to select this whole column, column A. This is something that I, a very common practice of mine, to select the whole column because I know that I'm not going to use this column for anything but online stores. And the thing is, if I add more stores, I want those stores to appear in my list. If I only select these three, then these are the only three things I will ever have on my list. So in order to create more flexibility for the future, it is better to select the whole column. So click on column A. Okay, for this I've decided, eh, I won't bother with any of the other settings. I'm just gonna set that up and click okay. And again, the title does not need to have, or should not have data validation on it. So the title is the one exception. So I will go to data validation and click clear all to remove data validation from this title. Now for the HP laptop, let's say I sold it on Amazon. As you can see, I now have a drop down, and I can easily select my items. Say I got the necklace from Etsy, or rather, I'm, let's say I'm selling the necklace on Etsy. Phone charger, let's say I'm selling the phone charger on eBay. And as you can see, I could continue to add items. So for instance, let's say I'm selling something like a pair of jeans, All right? I'm selling jeans. They haven't sold yet and I'm going to put them on Etsy. As you can see, I can continue to add items and the data validation, the drop down list are going to work all the way down to the bottom of my list. Now, if you're really going to take this sort of thing seriously, um, one tip, whenever you are going to set up a list such as this. So it's a good idea to click on view, freeze panes, freeze top row. That way as you add items and the list grows longer, when you scroll down, you will still be able to see the column headings. So as you scroll down your list, you'll still be able to see the titles as your list gets a lot longer. So that's a very important tip, right? Which is kind of a whole separate issue from the main point of this video, right? But it's a very important tip. So I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, feel free to hit like, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Also, I'm going to provide a link in the description of this video. If you click that link, it'll allow you to enter your email and quite possibly, um, well, if you, if you want to, you can leave a message 
with your email as well. And um, that message could be a, re a request for the template for the actual file that I'm using right now. I do save all these files, and so if you want to request a copy of it, I'm willing to send you a copy. And again, feel free to hit like, feel free to subscribe, but also feel free to leave comments, suggestions, or any other feedback on this video. And thanks for watching.